cursed and your grandfather was cursed and your great grandfather was cursed and your great great grandfather was cursed that curse is not strong enough to come upon you because when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Master of your life all curses past, present and future were destroyed the shores of beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome to Walking in Victory with Bishop Neil C. Ellis. The powerful and prophetic ministry of Bishop Neil C. Ellis is impacting the lives of believers all around the world. His bold and forthright presentation of spiritual truths and biblical principles is sure to change your life forever. Get ready to experience a fresh approach to ministry as this anointed author and pastor teaches us how to walk in victory. Walking in victory. Welcome to Walking in Victory. I'm Patrice Ellis, and might I say, I'm so delighted to be back with you. Our captain, in the person of Bishop Neil Ellis, felt he needed to navigate this ship through some really rough waters. And so I'm guessing he thinks the seas are calm enough now for me to return to you. So I am so delighted that you've decided to tune in to today's telecast. So today, we begin the series on the blessings of Abraham. And on today's telecast, I will share with you a portion of the foundational message that Bishop Ellis shared with the congregation that takes great care in ensuring that believers understand that we are not cursed and that God's purpose for life is bigger than our lives. Bishop Ellis further admonishes us that what God is birthing in your life and what is attracting pain, discomfort, and discouragement is not only because what you are birthing is bigger than you and larger than your lifespan, but it is also because God wants you to make a major impact on this generation. I want you to be blessed today from this message, and it is entitled, The Blessing of Abraham. by saying whatever it is that God is doing in your life is not supposed to end with you. What God has begun in you is so magnanimous my assignment is, ladies and gentlemen, that you come to the place where you realize that it cannot end in your lifetime. Whatever it is that God is doing in your life 
it will outlive you. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, whatever it is that God is doing in your life in this season, you need to know. It's going to outlive you. It is too magnanimous to be packaged into one life. That brings me then to a major theological theme that we see running through the Old Testament and then connecting with the New Testament. What's that theological theme? That the God we serve is a God of generations. Now everybody need to hear that. The God we serve is a God of generations. When the Bible listed God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Bible was making it extremely clear that the God we serve is a God of generations. God is so awesome and so magnanimous in who he is that almost everything he does he does it in a way that transcends generations. And because God is a God who does things that transcends generations, whatever it is that God is doing with you and in you and through you and for you, you understand then that that is bigger than you and longer than your lifespan. Now that's pivotal. Even if you didn't lift your hands on that, I mean, if you are to have an appreciation for this message that I will deliver today, understand that whatever it is that God is doing in you, and with you, and for you, it's bigger than you. And it's larger than your lifetime. I wonder if you really heard that. You see, because if you understood that, then my brothers and sisters, you shouldn't be discouraged by the level of discomfort and pain and, 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 and disappointment that's coming your way because you are birthing something that's bigger than your life. You've got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, one of the reasons why you are here and still alive on this earth is because something is going on in your life that is supposed to be handed down to your descendants. What God is doing in your life, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to make sure you get it, is bigger than your lifespan. You can't live long enough to fulfill in your one life what God has begun in your life. That's why you have descendants. Are y'all listening? All right, let's go to straight to congregational number two. Abraham's faith in and obedience to God made him believe in the promises of God and was willing to leave all his familiar surroundings to go where the Lord wanted him to go. The Lord was faithful to his promise and blessed Abraham abundantly. Mm -hmm. Abraham demonstrated his faith in God again when he believed God for the birth of his promised son Isaac, even when he was 100 years old. Go ahead. He also showed his supreme love for God when he was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac in obedience to God. Uh -huh. As, a, As result, a result. He entered into a covenant of blessings. He entered God. into a covenant of blessings. 
Because he obeyed God. He entered into a covenant of blessings. Read on from there. With, with God, God which, which according, according to, God, to God would fall, fall down on all, all of his, his descendants. descendants. All right. Now, let me ask this question. Who are the descendants of Abraham? All right. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Let's read verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. Okay, let's understand before we fully answer that question now, let's understand first of all, this whole process of redemption in this text. Redeem means to buy back. You had it, you lost it, you want it back so badly, you're willing to pay for it and buy it back. Now, now, what you're buying back was originally yours. But you lost it. So you are redeeming. You are reclaiming. You are purchasing back. Good God from Zion. What was yours and was now lost. Okay. So what you might got to understand here then is because, because Jesus became the curse. And bought us back or redeemed us. We don't have to suffer with curses anymore. Right. Now let's make sure we there on that. All right. The curses that, I'm, that I've been redeemed from ladies and gentlemen. Have nothing to do with eternity. Nothing to do with heaven or hell. The curses deal with our lives here on earth. When Jesus shed his blood on Calvary's cross, he not only provided forgiveness for our sins, but he also broke any curse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You heard me? Uh -uh. There's there no, no need to waste sleep worrying about who has you fixed before they thought they fixed you. That curse was broken. Let's repeat this together. Let's begin to read. I, I am, am not cursed. Read that one more time. I am not cursed. Go ahead. I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Right. No curse from man, woman, demon, or devil can take root in my life. Go ahead. I have been released from any and all generational curses. From where? From both sides of the family. Going both back what? Four generations. Four generations. That's 160 years, y'all. If your mama was cursed, or your grandmother was cursed, or your great-grandmother was cursed, or your great-great-grandmother was cursed, that can't come up on you. If your father was cursed and your grandfather was cursed and your great-grandfather was cursed and your great-great-grandfather was cursed, that curse is not strong enough to come upon you because when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Master of your life, all curses, past, present, and future were destroyed. Don't be walking around letting people convince you, boy, that thing you're suffering with. Your grandfather had that. Your granny had that. And you're walking around. Every six weeks, you're nervous. Since the last check. Because you just know something keeps telling you. You have inherited this curse. You have inherited this genes. This, this is flowing through generational blood. No, 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 no. Look at somebody and tell them it's been broken. It's been broken. Okay, let's go back now to verse number 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay, watch this now. So ladies and gentlemen, you could stay there saying, I'm a sinner. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a saved. Yeah, have you been baptized? And I don't need baptism. He's checking in my heart. Have you been baptized? 
have you followed Jesus in believers baptism are you the member of a church actively involved and talking about your faith in Jesus and you still not being baptized some other denominations would call this confirmation because the baptism that I'm speaking about, I'm not speaking about baptizing of babies. That's what others call it. That's christening for us. Baptism through faith, faith in Jesus Christ. You can't receive as a baby because you have to come yes, into the full knowledge. Yes, sir. Of your parents can't give you faith. So as many as were baptized into Christ, this is why, ladies and gentlemen, that he who knew no sin was baptized. John says, man, I'm not worthy my, my, my. to baptize you. Say, stop it, John. Baptize me. Because what Jesus was doing was establishing a pattern yes, and laying out a pathway to connect with him. So when we are baptized, what we are is baptized into Christ. We are denouncing the world system. And we are saying, all to Jesus now, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. So God then established a covenant. Establish a covenant between him and Abraham and all of his descendants after him in their generations. Okay. So my papa knew Jesus. And daddy is a minister of the gospel. And now here I am. I got it falling from daddy, from, from papa to daddy. And then on my own accord through accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Master of my life, that's a double proportion. See, because as a descendant of Abraham, you are entitled to whatever God promised him. Yes, sir. Now, he did this in the form of a covenant. And this is where I'm going to wrap this up. So a covenant is an agreement a vow, a promise between two parties to carry out the terms that were agreed upon. But there are two basic types of covenant. One, the conditional, which is sometimes referred to as the bilateral. And secondly, the unconditional, which is sometimes referred to as unilateral. All right. Now, in a conditional covenant, both parties agree to fulfill certain conditions. In an unconditional covenant, covenant only one of the two parties has to do something nothing is required of the third party the Abrahamic covenant is more of an unconditional covenant God who never changes who's the same yesterday today and forever hardly ever deals with man unless he does it through a covenant if you I will Bring me the tithe into the storehouse. Prove me. Say, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there'll be not be room enough to receive. That's a covenant. One of the components, ladies and gentlemen, of the covenant that God made to Abraham was that whatever he promised him, it was not for him only. But the promise and commitment from God to Abraham was this. Whatever I do for you, I will also do for your descendants after you. You say, okay, Bishop, when my mother wasn't saved and my father wasn't saved, my grandfather, I don't know. My grandmother, I don't know. But are you? All right. See, watch this now. Because if your parent was saved before you, they are passing on. And you, once you accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you have now opened the gate to pass it next. 
That's why every generation is responsible for teaching the next generation how to praise the Lord. Yes. One of the reasons why we have so many problems and social issues in our country today is because the previous generation didn't train the rest. And many of us who are parents today are doing a not so good a job. We buy them the tennis they want. We give them all the money they want. They got the latest cell phone. Even though their grades are C's and D's. They got the latest of everything. But you are not enforcing the word of God in their lives. They could choose whether or not they go to church on Sunday morning. They could go to bed and go to sleep without prayer in your house. And so you are not enforcing what God expects you to be doing to pass down to the next generation so all the descendants after you ain't nobody saying nothing on this can pass this on. See, there are some parents who can celebrate God in church but never do it at home. They testify and talk about God around God's people. That's easy to do. But they don't do it at home. You know why? Because they got these split personalities. They have a personality for church, a personality for work, a personality for home. And you are confusing your children. They don't want to know the God you know. But we got to be one in all. Same person in church, the same person on the job, the same person at home, the same person at Toastmasters, the same person at the Rotary Clubs, the same person in our chat groups. Watch your language. Okay. So whenever God speaks to man or deals with man, he deals with it in the covenant. Okay, so Bishop... Why are you on this series? Because of what God promised this year? Last year was a year of challenges and crisis and chaos. And this year is now a year of creativity, courage, and what? Confidence. Confidence. Because for most of you, ladies and gentlemen, last year matured you. Some of you didn't know you had the kind of strength you had until Corona. Corona brought you face to face with yourself. You realize I'm stronger than I thought I was. I'm more patient than I used to be. I could tolerate more than I used to. The hand of God is upon me. And so this year, understand, ladies and gentlemen, that you have entered into a year that is totally different from last year. And watch this. The things that God has in store for your life, you really need to understand what you qualify for. And hear me today. As I said last week and the week before, this is going to be a glorious year, but here in the Bahamas, it's going to get darker before we see the light. But the good news is, those of you who are covered here, and under this Abrahamic covenant, it does not matter how dark it gets, the sun will shine in your life. My friends, I trust that you have been blessed by today's message, and I want to encourage you to invest and be a blessing to your generations. Until next time, I'm Patrice Ellis, and on behalf of my husband, Bishop Neil Ellis, and the entire Walking in Victory team, thank you so much for joining us today, and I invite you to tune in again next week at the same time. So until then, I need you to remember be a blessing to your generations, and also remember that you have been anointed to walk in victory. Good to see you.
Stay connected with Neil Ellis Ministries via our social media networks. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Here you'll find daily inspiration, motivational quotes, photos, and videos. Don't want to miss another live event? Follow us on live stream. You can do this by either downloading the app or by visiting www.livestream.com. You will have access to Bishop Ellis's weekly television broadcast, live events, and so much more. Follow us today and stay connected. Bishop Neil C. Ellis and the Mount Tabor Church family in Nassau, Bahamas, wish to thank you for viewing the Walking in Victory broadcast and invite you to tune in next week to experience this powerful prophetic ministry. Should you wish to correspond with Bishop Ellis, please write him at P.O. Box N9705, Nassau, Bahamas, or email him at info at neilellisministries.com. Walking in victory.